The first person to take me to a museum was my mom. When I grew up, there wasn't any kind of explanation around being Asian. I'm a Southerner at heart, but that experience wasn't quite for me. Well, I was originally born in Wilmington, North Carolina. And my grandmother would get a photocopy paper. I would use all of it and beg for more. This is Jasmine tip one. Shit ain't easy. It is not easy. This shit is a hustle. Should I do a nine to five and just make it easy on myself? I have to make this work somehow, somewhere. <laughs> Based on our conversation thus far, when do you feel most supported by curators? I didn't know how to be an artist. I didn't even know what a portfolio was. Artists are some of the bravest people in the world. Can we assume that every black artist has the same experience, that they all view the world in the same lens? The answer to that is no. I well, first off, thank you for taking time out speaking with me. My name is Aries Gip from Urban Bridges. Aries, a pleasure to meet you, brother. You as well. I'm actually a fan because, well, we'll get into that later. But um, <laughs> congrats on the best series of um, web report that you won recently for this. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Absolutely. No I'm problem. honored to have this opportunity to speak with you. I appreciate that. What inspired the whole thing of who behind Black Art? What made you even want to put this out? You know, for me, uh, it was having these conversations where I don't know about you, but I can say for myself, watching art documentaries on television, it was sometimes a bit over my head. Sometimes I felt like I just didn't know enough about this person or about certain parts of the history. And I felt like there's a whole world of conversation that we can make it way more relatable. And so a big part of that was who's talking about these emerging artists on their journey because like you and me, they've got their challenges and we're not just talking about a specific piece and we're not just talking about a hundred years ago. We're talking about life. <laughs> we're talking about what's real. And so having this conversation with emerging artists was uh, very attractive to me. It was very appealing because I felt that it was relatable for an audience. So that began the whole thing, but it came through me being invited to an exhibit at Philip Michael Collins's studio. Um, and I saw all this work by these young artists and all these young people in this room. And I said, this is the documentary. This is what I know what's talking about. And he said, okay. I said, no, I'm serious. It's this, it's these people who are gonna tell you that it's hard. I'm, I'm having challenges, but I'm gonna keep going. That's the conversation an audience needs to hear. I love that. Talk about some of the artists that you decided to feature while you were at the spotlight or all five of them. Why did I choose these five artists? So, you know, uh, in the process, I had um, mentioned to Phil that I wanted to just work with good black art and see the artists that they have relationships around the world. So I was, it took about three months, but we were interviewing people from all over the world. And I can tell you, it was these five people that resonated with me because I'm thinking about the audience. You know, I'm not just thinking about um, how someone looks on television. I'm looking for that person who is a nurse that also can do photography, but is too afraid, or that person who mm -hmm. might want to do something in this space, but have challenges, but need some inspiration. I was looking for that. And these five people gave me that by telling me their truths and saying that they were not afraid to speak about it on camera. Yeah, okay, that definitely answers that. <laughs> talk, talk to us a bit about working with Comcast Black Experience. What, what has that been like? So that's been fantastic for me. I can tell you that uh, my um, agent, Valerie, Valerie Moraz from the Moraz Collective, she had been working with me for over a year and you know we've had several conversations with companies but she then introduced me to uh, Caroline Kim who's senior head um, over at um, uh, Black Experience at, at Xfinity and I can tell you just that first conversation my gut was telling me this is where you need to be 
Mm. And I mean that sincerely. I, I really pay close attention to my gut, my instincts. Right. And I felt comfortable. I felt that she could be honest with me. I felt that um, she would care. And so that began, that began a great relationship. Uh, and then we started talking about um, how to move things forward. Um, what I love about Black Experience on Xfinity is the range of, you know, their, their scope and what they're doing there. And I also yeah. love that um, you can, I don't know if you, you probably will know this, but there are times when you may be signed to a company and you're not able to reach that person, right? You may be two persons away, right? No, they are very engaging and they want you to know that they are there. And so that has been really good for me. Um, they also introduced me to Strategic Heights Media, who has also been phenomenal doing the PR. So mm -hmm. I kind of like the whole in-house experience. Mm -hmm. That has been good for me. So um, I'm glad that, you know, we uh, just launched October 1st on Black Experience, on Xfinity and on Zuma Play, just in case you may not have Xfinity. It's a free app, download XUMO. Um, Zoom or Play, that's what it is. And uh, yeah, it, this whole series is there. You'll see it right as you go into the Black Experience on Xfinity. Well, yeah, it sounds like a great partnership. So really good to hear that. And then you have to tell everybody yes. that hasn't already checked out why they need to check out who's behind Black Art on Xfinity. Absolutely. So, you know, the thing that I feel that people especially culturally, you know, people of color, we don't do enough going to museums and galleries, right? I feel like it's unfortunate because they're everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. And we miss out on some local talent. We miss out on just, and you don't have to buy anything. You could just attend, right? And see what's going on in our community, right? See how people are expressing themselves creatively. So that's mm -hmm. one, but also as well, Part of what I hope for with this is that people will see that emerging art can be really cheap, right? People think that, oh, I, I couldn't afford that, but that's not true. You, you could buy something for under $100 from an emerging artist. You may spend more than that, but you certainly could say, well, what is my budget? Many artists also have payment plans where right. they're open to people <laughs> saying, yes, yeah, sure, that's the deposit, let's keep it. Well, if you really like the piece and if you really want to support that artist. But there's so many young creative people that I feel that we can really inspire by just following them on Instagram, going to an exhibit, you know, or, or just finding, you know, out where they're going or what they're doing. It matters. It really matters to this generation yeah. of emerging artists. Big time, especially that whole social media sharing and talking about it. Exactly. And then switching gears real quick. <laughs> Being that you were born in London, England, how do you think that prepared you for the career you have now? Mm. Or how do you think it directed you to the career you have now? I will tell you that it gave me... So first of all, my parents are Jamaican, right? Mm. So I'm coming from having the rice and peas on a Sunday, right? Mm -hmm. but understanding it's bang is a mash on Monday, right? So, mm -hmm. so there were two um, things that were kind of igniting culture and traditions to me, but I always had my eyes set on moving to America. So mm -hmm. I got the opportunity 25 years ago, and I'm telling you, I really appreciate where I was coming from because I, I see the benefits and opportunities that many times people don't see here. I really do, because I, I feel America has so much to offer. I think sometimes um, it may not feel that way if you were born and raised here, <laughs> but if you were born somewhere else, you really could appreciate the magnitude of where um, people of color really have arrived in this country, you know, over the hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, and I feel that that's an important component and one of the reasons why I wanted to get into filmmaking so that I can now offer something in return to the community. Nice. I love that. Well, that's the way, that's the reason to do it. So that's why it's successful. Sure. 
And then the music industry is pretty much where you begin from what yes. I read. So yes. I have to ask you to share any type of story of dealing with a recording <laughs> artist or a label during your experience in those years. <laughs> okay, so do you want to know an experience in relation to the music industry? Mm -hmm. My career there. All right, so I'm going to tell you something. So when I was at school, young school kid, I my dad had this radio in the kitchen that he would listen to every morning. And I heard this woman's voice. And I was like, who is that? And it was Whitney Houston, right? And I thought, oh my goodness. Of course, I couldn't afford to go and see her. She was at Wembley Arena. This was when her career just started. Mm -hmm. So I sneaked out the house, exactly. I sneaked out the house and I walked to Wembley Arena from my home, which was, by walking, it was about an hour and a half. Oh, wow. I get to Wembley Arena and I'm just standing outside because I can't afford it, but you can hear. Wembley Arena is so big and loud. You could just stand outside and hear everything. The security guy comes over to me and says, what are you doing here? I said, oh, I just wanted to hear her sing, you know? And he said, wait there. And he came back. Now remember, I'm barely a teenager. He came back, took me into the arena and said, sit here, but don't tell anyone, right? So I'm seeing all these lights on the stage for the first time and saying, what is this? Wow, this is incredible. <laughs> I loved it, right? Now that inspired me to get into the music business. And so imagine. my brother and I, we work on music together and we both work with some of the greatest artists and mm -hmm. um, groups in the world. Now think about this. I then was offered a job in Atlanta from London and an agent called me and said, oh, um, I have uh, someone uh, for you to do some shows with. And I said, no, I'm actually moving to America. And she says, okay, but you might want to do this one. And I said, well, who's it with? And she said, Whitney Houston. I said, I will cancel my ticket <laughs> today. I said, she is the reason why I got into the music, in the, into the music industry in the first place. That is a true story. And it was, it was the last thing I did in the music industry in England, the last thing. And they still show that on television today. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, that is amazing. I mean, <laughs> I knew you worked with Whitney. I didn't want to specifically ask you, but no, I wanted a Whitney story. <laughs> oh, listen, she, she is everything. She was phenomenal. She was absolutely phenomenal to work with. I have the utmost respect for her. I was a fan, you know, from when I was a kid, but to actually end my music career working with her and just doing background vocals, which is what I was doing, um, was probably in my top three of highlights so far. Truly blessed, but that's a great story. Thank you for sharing. And then what's next for you? So, uh, not that I'm able to share the name of it, but I can tell you this is why I'm with Black Experience at Xfinity. We have another project that will be coming out um, and uh, it will be on the platform at the end of the year and more people will be okay. hearing about it. Unfortunately, I can't share too much about it, but this is part of the intention of building a relationship with Black Experience and Xfinity for me, because I think they understand about conversations um, of uh, Black people and people of color, and um, they are not afraid to um, celebrate that and put that out there. So, um, so that's next. I'm filming two documentaries at the same time. Um, I finished one in December, and uh, the other won't be finished until the end of next year. And then I'm um, just signed on to another project that I'll be uh, doing as well. Well, congratulations. I'm looking forward to the next one on Xfinity for sure. And congratulations. I think it's like, isn't it 25 years with Urban Bridges now? Something like that. Okay. Thank yeah. you so much. Of course. Congratulations to you and everyone in your team. This is critical. Critical. We need what you do. We're blessed. So that means a lot. Is there anything else you want to share before we wrap? Right? I would just say, number one, check out Who's Behind Black Art on Black Experience on Xfinity and on Zumo Play. If you do not have Xfinity, 
I want to give a shout out to firstly Valerie Moraz from Moraz Collective. I want to give a shout out to the team at Black Experience on Xfinity, which is Caroline Kim, Lisa Stelling, Lauren, and the whole team there, as well as our PR team at Strategic Heights Media. Shout out to everyone in cast and crew, supporting and celebrating emerging artists everywhere. Couldn't have said it better. <laughs> well, I want to again thank you for taking time out, John. I really appreciate speaking with you. And again, I'm looking forward to everything you do next. <laughs> thank you, Aries. It's a pleasure meeting you. Hopefully, we get to meet again soon. Well, continue success and blessing. Thank you, brother. So now, I wasn't being challenged as much before I went to grad school. That was the reason why I kind of stepped into another academic space. I tried to go to grad school. That did not work. I couldn't afford it. I was actually going to drop out. I think that was probably one of the lowest moments I've had. I had to sit in jail for 30 days. I'm sorry, John. I'm like, cry. Black women. Black women. Black women. Black women in art are not getting what they deserve. Yeah, I got a mouthful on this. Uh, what was the question again? There's exploitation, there's theft of art, there's appropriation. Do I go there? <laughs> yes. Do I burn it down? Burn it down. White guilt really took over the art world. There's a large resurgence of black art that's being popularized in the media. It was a conversation that a lot of black artists were having. Social media changed the game, I'm telling you. I remember having conversations with artists one week. The next week, they'd have no available works. As an artist, race is not necessarily a factor on who has my work. The main goal for me is to have people who are gonna protect my work. And store it away from the window, if you are in this room, that means that you follow us, you have supported us uh, to our artists. In my opinion, we are limitless. I am who's behind Blackheart.